So I've been seeing this wig group online for such a long time and I've been very interested in it. I've been wanting to buy it, but I've been checking it out because I feel like I might be able to make myself. So a few days ago, I went online searching for how to make it and lo and behold, there wasn't necessarily any links on how to make it, okay? So one thing that actually made me fully decide to actually try and make it today was this word right here. So what, you know, I found that the wig grape is actually made from velvet material. And then I thought, wait a minute, I've got a velvet fabric that I bought from the fabric store a while back just because you know what I mean so I decided let me give it a try so I made the first one it turned out okay but not perfect because as you can see it's a bit wider than the one that I eventually end up making the second time so I decided to try and make it again the second time around and this time around let me turn the camera just in case it works out well and it kind of did if I do say so myself before we go into this video I just want to let you know that there are a couple of things that is different from the actual wig grip that has been sold online and that is like number one as you can see here the wig grip itself that's been sold online has has some sort of uh, an overlocker stitching on the edge of the wig grip and also the pattern that's sewed in, in the center of the wig grip is a bit different to mine. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the reason why they do this pattern in the middle of the wig grip is because velvet fabric, like they, when they rub against each other, they slip and slide. And I know this when I use velvet fabric to kind of tie a scarf, it keeps slip, it slips and slides when it's touching each other. But when I sewed it down, I realized it didn't slip and slide. So I believe that is the reason why they put this pattern um, in the center so that way they can sew down the fabric like sew it together so it doesn't slip and slide now second thing that's a bit different to the one I made is as you can see the one that sold online has an uh, a velcro bind but I used a button for mine just kind of improvise okay so I hope you enjoyed this video my name is Esther Kim Mr. Park J let's jump straight into it so blessed, pray for me Madura, me pray I find my way all right, so to get started, I need my scissors, tape measure, and also the velvet fabric. And the velvet fabric is stretchy lengthwise and also stretches across as well, but it mostly stretches lengthwise. So I'm gonna cut it lengthwise to the direction where it stretches. So I'm gonna measure two and a quarter um, inches and then double it up so it's gonna be four and a half inches. So that way by the time it's folded, it's folded two and a quarter inches. Does that make sense? And then lengthwise, I measured my head and it came to around 23 inches. I went ahead and I had it down so that way I can see the line of demarcation basically so it's easier to cut that way so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that now I'm gonna go ahead and fold the top and bottom edges in so that way it appears neater And once that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it together with the right side kissing and sew it all the way down. And then I'm gonna turn it over. And because this is a velvet fabric, you wanna be careful, make sure you keep, keep an eye on it because when the right sides are kissing, they do slip and slide as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So you just wanna make sure you keep an eye on it and make sure it is aligning as you sew it down. And this is it all flipped over. And as you can see, I try to iron it down. I don't know why I was trying to do that and I burnt it. I burnt it. I'm just gonna align this properly. So here we are, we have the velvet, the band. I should be in the name of a band. So I am just going to start drawing a triangle. All right, so I've got a ruler. I'm just going to place this down. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna leave this bit a little because I'm gonna need it for my button later. I'm gonna grab our ruler and we're just gonna start drawing a triangle. Just enough so I can see it when I'm sewing. I'm gonna bring it all the way up and all the way down so I don't have to sew this down. Doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm, and I'm gonna make the next one a bit bigger. Fantastic. Now we're gonna sew this down. So here we go. I'm gonna bring it upside down like so. And you sew your back stitch. Just follow that, raise it up, and pivot. Pivot, raise it up, pivot, raise it up, pivot, just keep going. Okay. 
almost there. Just keep going. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? After the video, I also went ahead and drew the triangle again upside down, you know, opposite the triangle where they drew. So that way the velvet um, strip is more secured and not grinding against each other in the other spaces of the triangle, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> I also went ahead and sewed the one edge of the band down. So that way it stays flat on my head. I just felt the need to do this. I didn't really feel like it was important or mandatory. Here we are, we've got our velvet band okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and put a button because i don't have the velcro band or whatever i'm just marking where the button's gonna go you know this is where the button will go and this is where the hole will be this mark right here i'm gonna be doing it on the inner part not the outer so i'm using the zigzag option on my sewing machine to make this hole i'm just gonna do the zigzag on two sides that's the first one i'm gonna do the second one right here and so I'm just gonna grab this two right here and just and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that space open a little bit I could make the hole look more professionally but honestly babes I saw this as my second attempt at making this wig grip I believe my third time is going to be way better and I went ahead and picked a button sewed the button down on the other end of the fabric where I marked earlier and boom bugged your uncle I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over I'm gonna go ahead and sew this down this is it all done this looks So I've got the wig grip headband or whatever here on my neck, but I'm not gonna put it on yet. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the wig and show you the wig with the wig grip and without it. I just curled this, so I haven't really brushed it out yet. So it's not about the curl or whatever. It's just about this thing right here. And as you can see, this has elastic band, but it's kind of on its last leg as well. So I need to replace it soon because it's all roly poly, you know what I mean? And this wig is not always snug. I'm about to look like Medusa. <laughs> So this is it on and um, if I flip my hair, it's still gonna be a little bit snug, but the front part is gonna start coming off. So let's flip it. Oh. <laughs> you see that? That actually happened earlier on with the first one I made. I should put on a wig cap, but I don't have any or I can't find it. I have some, but I don't know where it is. All right, so here we go. So the wig is on. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put this on and this is pretty snug. So I'm gonna pull it up a bit uh, 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 Past my edges our button right here See, this is the thing about this wig grip or edge saver, whichever, whatever the companies, companies are calling it. The main reason why I feel like the wigs are staying put is because you've got that extra layer of bulginess, which it's not really bulgy, but that's the word I could find for it. Like that extra layer of, you know, which is the band itself. So it kind of makes the wig a bit more snug. You know what I mean? I feel like that's why the wig grips or edge saver or whatever are actually working. Can you see now I have to pull it over. Okay. I should brush this out, shouldn't I? Wig is on. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. And um, you know, you can't really see it. That's why the fact that I use a color that's not necessarily conventional, I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't have to spend like $30 to buy the egg saver alone for something that I could make myself. Even if it's temporary use, but I could still make it myself. So I'm happy. And then now when I like lay down my edges, it's not for the purpose of making sure the wig stays on. It is mostly for the purpose of just laying down my wedges and making sure the um, lace melts more into my skin, um, into my scalp or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> I know I'm looking a bit weird with this wig on not brushed out, but I that's okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope I explained this process accurately because that's one of my challenges and not explaining things right sometimes, you know what I mean? And I hope when you do try it out, you find it easy. You find this video easy to follow, okay? So yeah, this is the other one I made earlier, as I said. <laughs> Look at that. Thanks for watching, as I said. And as always, whatever well, you love yourself and I'll see you in my very next video. Bye.